Hi everyone. Hi guys. Here we are. Um, today, now this is this is kind of uh, it could be a biggie or not a biggie really, but it's a subject in could fragrance. Be a semi, could be a biggie. It could be a semi. Yeah. Um, but this the is, magic word. In yeah, we person. haven't done a top ten for a while. No, I mean hardly yeah. ever do, but we do love them now. But a few people have um, asked us to do a top ten. Yeah. And so here we are. So our top ten, ten oud fragrances. Now oud, when we were talking about this. It's a bit of a tricky one because oud is such a big category that I feel it's an ing it's a note, an ingredient, a material that I'm only I still feel I'm only really getting into. Yeah, same here, all the way. It's really yeah. complicated. What is oud? What well, I mean, primarily, as my understanding of oud goes, oud is not a product, but oud is actually describing a, a wood. Yeah. Well, I mean, oud, oud is just the Arabic word. Uh, uh, oud is the Arabic yeah. word for uh, for wood, but uh, uh, oud, as in as we perceive it in perfumery, as in agarwood, is what the aquilaria yeah. tree um, produces a resin when it becomes infected with this moss. And so normally the aquilaria tree, if you harvest the wood, it doesn't really smell of anything. But yeah. once it becomes infected uh, by this moss and develops this resin, it has this very very um, strong pungent smell, which has been used in perfumery in the Middle East for hundreds, I think, yeah. thousands of years. Um, I'm glad they caught on to it, because... Uh, but it in really the West, cool. it's been a very new thing. Yeah, people have tried. Yeah. Uh, you know, 2003. Is that M7? M7. Yeah, by Yves Saint Laurent. Sort of was a bit of a flop in the West. But people now, didn't grasp what you see the word food plastered all yeah. over the place. Um, in Western Too much. You see it all the time. Um, but do... The fragrance that smell of oud. Do they contain oud? In, 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 in a, a thing? I mean, I, I, we are not oud experts, but, no, God, no. but uh, as we understand it, you have oud oil where somebody has distilled it from the oud wood itself. Um, you also have synthetic oud, yeah, um, where somebody's tried to recreate the oud, the impression of oud oil synthetically, and then you have uh, an oud accord where yeah. people have used um, various ingredients to give the effect of oud, especially things like myrrh. Yeah. and various words, they uh, combine to, together. To the um, and given the, the fact that oud is worth more than its weight in gold, yeah. and its increasing rarity, and also its inconsistency, um, I think it's safe to say that on any mass-produced fragrance, you're not going to get real oud oil. No, no. no. Unless, you're, I mean, unless you're paying seriously hefty money. Yeah. It's unlikely, isn't it? Um, and so our top ten is two things, it's, it's a top ten we put together, so sometimes we do our five favourite each, whereas this time we've sat together and chosen this ten. In we've this, come up with a plan. As yeah, we've come up with a, a plan, which is two things, it, it ends with our, our, I think our favourite, yeah. and it gets to our favourite, but also it's our kind of journey into Oud. Yeah. So if, you, if you're it's new nice to it and, and you are just thinking, oh, I would like to try some Oud fragrances, I would suggest you start with ten. Yeah. And you don't go straight to one. <laughs> if you start at one, you'll have a <coughs> wonderful shock. But yeah. It might be fun to sort of delve in at the other end and, but, and work through. But why don't you start, I mean, I don't know about Joe, but this is, if we, the number 10 is when I first started getting into fragrance, Joe took me around lots of shops in London uh, and we smelled loads and loads of things and we ended up in Selfridges, I think. And then he yeah. said, oh, you've got to try this. This is a very well-known fragrance, which you will, which you will all know. And when I smelled it, I was like, oh, that's completely overwhelming. Yeah. Now, as I look back, I'm not so overwhelmed, but it is a great, great It still has it, doesn't it? Fragrance. This is Jubilation 25 oh. from the House of Amouage. So you've got the, the old... This is the old original. ...friction yeah. cap, uh, plastic bottle, which is very special. Do you want to talk about this? And I'll give a little spray, if that's right. Yeah, it's, so, I mean, Jubilation 25, first thing to mention is that it's by... A perfumer that we both love, Bertrand Duchaufour. I'm sure we all, I'm sure we all love a lot of his work. Um, and it's just a mixture. I think someone described it once, possibly Kafkaesque or someone like that. Said it's a sort of biblical treasure trove yeah. of all the ingredients in the Bible. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Everything. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It's your gold, not your gold, mm. but you've got frankincense, and myrrh. You've got this wonderful sort of berry note in the yeah. top. You've got this wonderful. Silver frankincense that Amouage were a famous for. A pop and axe, which is kind of a sweet. Pop and axe. All these resins in the base, like the myrrh. 
and this blue note, which is absolutely this stunning. This is just this woodiness which goes underneath it all. Yeah, so, it underpins it beautifully. So, uh, the house of Amouage is, is an Oman house, it's a Middle Eastern house, but yeah. this, is, this is a Western um, perfumer. Yes. So this is, even coming from a, a Middle Eastern house, this is, a, I think we would categorise this as a Western. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's through the prism of someone that's worked for, but, you know, Lattes and Penhaligans and yeah, all these guys. very much so. So he has sensibility. But is it, and this is, I, I posted about this on Instagram recently because this is something I came to earlier and I thought, wow, this is completely overwhelming. Mm. And then a few years later I thought, no, 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 it's, it's not so, so I've smelt much more impressive and complicated things. Even from Amouage themselves, yeah. you, you sort of went on that journey, didn't but, you? But found you, I come back to it, and it is, the reason it's so popular is it's a very, very, very beautiful fragrance. It really is. It's a great introduction to oud. There's definitely a lovely kind of oud or oud accord or synthetic oud in there. The effect of oud amidst lots of other things. Yeah. So that you needn't be afraid or scared. Absolutely. Of, of delving into oud. It's got that bit of spice. It, it takes you. It takes you to the. It takes you to the Middle East. And smells says, a bit right, Let's go on a journey. It? Yeah. Absolutely beautiful. Wonderfully opulent without being cloying. It's mm. not really overpowering. I don't think. No. It's, it's through that Western sensibility, but I, I love it. So number nine mm. is more of the same. In yes, many, it, In many ways. So this is Al Oud from the house of Lattes and Parfumer. And this, we're staying with Bertrand de Chauffeur. Yep, we love him. So this is, I mean, it's actually cheaper than uh, Jubilation. So it's, it's not actually a, a hugely expensive fragrance. No, but no. It still feels like it's, it's a Westerner's interpretation of Oud, um, but I think even more so that he's trying to create a feel of the or Orient, specifically yeah. a souk. Yes. So there's a lot of um, spice and dried fruit, particularly there's this cumin. Yeah, there's oh, a, there's a big cumin note in this. I've not smelled this for ages. Which you feel um, kind of ramps up the potential animalic quality of Oud. Oh, this is really good. Yeah, it's and a also, sort of bedfellow. And there's lots of kind of dried fruit yeah, oh. Which, it's, this is a really, this fragrance is not talked about very much at all. It doesn't get any love, really, does it? It's really beautiful. It's really bold, but it's just on the cusp of bold and wearable, and I think it is wearable. Totally. I, I think the cumin just gives it, it gives it a little tiny hint of, of dirtiness. Filth. But it never crosses over mm. into a sort of full-blown, I don't want to wear this. Yeah. It's I mean, one it's of those... Stewed, stewed dates and... Absolutely. And plums Ooh. and like jubilation. It's one of those fragrances that, if you look on Fragrantica, the notes oh. list is about eight billion different things. But it doesn't. It doesn't feel chaotic. It feels it, just. There's a beautiful elegance if, and blend. As if that. he's just trying to, you know, play on the facets yeah. of, of oud. Okay. Masterfully done. So we are now uh, moving from the oh, west I'm to so the east, or this. at least to the Middle East. So this is from the house of Ajmal. This is Kalab. Um, this is a fragrance I found myself I stuck in Bahrain Airport. Which is never good. Uh, you don't uh, want to be stuck in Bahrain. It's not ideal. I, I had about nine hours to go in Bahrain Airport. Fortunately, Bahrain Airport... Is there oh, alcohol there? Uh, there is not. Oh my god. Uh, but but there, there, there is a lot of perfume. Thank god. Uh, particularly there is a lot from the UAE um, oh. based house of Ajmal. Um, now, I love it. I, as I understand it, Ajmal do distill oud. Um, I think that's the case. If I'm wrong, somebody correct me, but that's my understanding. And I, I remember trying lots of fragrances, mm. and this was just one that when I sprayed it, I thought, wow. I bought this about three or four years ago, and this is early on my journey into that's oud. So good. It's a big, that's bold, so barnyardy oud. But. Beautiful, though, beautiful but barnyard. The other main ingredient in this is grapefruit. Ah. I didn't. No. I did not realise. You, and you, and you, after the opening, you get something which is, you know, so dark Charlie. initially, becomes bright and uplifting, and just becomes underpinned by this rich woodiness. Mm. And I thought we often think there will be some rose oud combinations to come, and when we say oud, we often expect it to be paired with rose. Whereas in this instance, it's not paired with a dark flower; it's paired yeah. with a bright fruit. And often, you know, oud can be quite a, a clean and lean medicinal thing. It's yep. not always the sort of barnyard funk. So to combine mm. this the with barnyard, a facet yeah. of oud, which, it's not, yep. which is not contained there, it sort of, it gives you the other side of oud without even yep. having to, to sort of use that oud. 
That doesn't make any sense. I should you say, know, I mean, this is also incredible. I mean, this is about £40 for 50 mil. It's really, really wow. cheap. And it lasts for ever. I mean, it really, 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 really lasts all day. If you want to um, try something with a, with a strong oud note, which is actually quite wearable because of the kind of fresh grapefruit, and you don't want to spend mega bucks, I would suggest you check this out. I have to out. say, I mean, if you said to me that's a couple of hundred quid, it smells I, wouldn't, like it, I yeah. wouldn't blink. The quality if it was a Frederick Marle... Yeah, I wouldn't blink kind of at all. Can you still buy this? Yeah, yeah, you can get it. It's, it's, if you're in the UK, it's you readily available on, on, on eBay. It's the best place to look for it. Mm. I, do you know, I've not smelled that for mm. ages. I love it. Right, I think you should introduce the next one. We're moving back to the West. So, we're, yeah, we're back over here now with someone who I've discovered fairly recently. And I don't know if you're watching or if we link you to this vid, but hello, um, thank you for this, it's wonderful. Um, I just bought this yesterday in a lovely shop called Bloom, and I'd been wearing it for about a month or two from a sample, and fallen in love. It's just called Oud by Aaron Terence Hughes. Got on my hand. Uh, Dan has yeah. it here on, on the hand. And, I mean, the, we all love a concept and we all love great packaging and everything else. But actually, it's so nice when you just have oud on the bottle. Um, there's no concept, there's no fancy name. It's just a beautiful, I, I don't know how to describe it, a very sort of, a very dusty, woodsy. It just feels, I mean, I'm sure there must, there must be other things in it, but it just smells of woodiness. Yeah. You know, it just smells of wood. I don't get any kind of fruit or any kind of spice or floral or, or I incense or anything. I think that's it. It's, it's, if you could do a so, sort of solid floor mm. with an oud, I think this would be it. And it's, it's the real thing. I think, if I'm right, I'm going to say Cambodian or Laotian, I can't remember. But it's, this is real mm. oud in here. This isn't a synthetic. Um, and it reminded me of the choir stalls I used to sing in when I was a, a chorister. In Cambodia. In Cambodia, <laughs> where, you know, where they love their even song. Um, I'm going to... I'm, I'm not going to hand free, actually. Yeah. But uh, can I get, let me give you some more on there. We can, we can reapply at the same place. Yeah. Um, and I love oh, it. And I love quite, the fact it's, it's a punchy, British brand. It's a, it's a pretty punchy opening. It's really Which quite is interesting because what I was smelling um, before you just reapplied it was a very mellow nuttiness. Oh, it's quite, it's almost a boozy aspect to the stuff. Yeah, absolutely. If, if you said there's yeah. a little hint of something peaty in there as well, yeah, I could, yeah. I could buy that. But it's, it's this dusty woodiness that I love. And oud, you know, woodiness can be a facet mm. of an oud. But I interesting that really I would beautiful. say that the opening of this is more accessible than something like Cal. Yes, absolutely. I think it, it feels we have a reference order. to this in, in Western perfume. I yeah. Think. But I love it. I, I love the fact that it's a you know a British brand doing an oud fragrance. Yeah. Um, I mean, check check these these this guy out because he's done some beautiful things. There's mm. a lovely there's a rose oud chocolate that he does as well. Um, a lot, you know, I mean, lots mm. of other things. A beautiful neroli as well. I, I've been wearing over the summer. So, from England to Russia. God, that's a long journey. Yeah. Well, I mean, not not too far. So then we're By going coach, to. Coach. I can never pronounce her name. Anna Zverinka. So this is a uh, cuir de Russie, oh, which is a. Need skin for this as well. um, I, don't know if I, I may have got some skin. So this is Anna Zvarenka Kuidorussi. So Kuidorussi is, is a, a fragrance name, Russian leather, which has been around for 120 years. There, there have been a few, haven't there? Guerlain. Yeah. yeah the be... wonderful Chanel... Um, mm. Can I put it up? Please, please. The wonderful Chanel, which is a sort of model, but this is all natural. So it Everything, comes in including this... this big dose of oud in the base of it's... this. Wow. I mean, so... I, I mean, it's so off the charts, isn't it? This is, a, con considering everything else we've, we've sprayed so far, this is such a, a striking first spray. Gonna for that. It's boozy, woody, mm. leathery, kind of chocolatey. There's, I do, yeah, I do get that chocolatiness. That's one of the things I enjoy. Um, it gave me a slightly a bum steer yeah. before, the, before the oud and the medicinal aspects. But that is amazing. I mean, and they only come in these little, are they, what are these, five mil or are they? Eight, eight mil bottles. Yeah, these little eight, eight mil bottles, but they are potent. Yeah, I mean, they that, are all natural. You could have 10 sprays of that, but I think you wouldn't need it. Yeah. And apparently someone said that the Quidarusi thing um, was interesting because they would actually, there was some substance that would, they would, the Russian soldiers would, would shine into their boots. And it was the combination of that leather and then this, I think it was birch, 
Mm. I think it was this sort of um, birch tar. Yeah. They would they would smear. So the combination of the leather and the birch is is, it, is, is the, the thing leather. that does yeah. it. Yeah. And it's beautiful. I mean, it tastes me there for sure. But with that but sort with of chocolate, it, to, with yeah, well. with, yeah, mm. big dose of oud in the base of that. Beautiful. It's really good, isn't it? Right. Now our, our something completely different. Number, right? number five is our, our, our the last of our kind of out and out Western fragrances. Yeah. And from quite an unexpected house, a, a, a French house, a very French house, yeah. a candle house, um, who are, you know, well known for doing very quite, nice bougie. mostly kind of quite soft fragrances. For them, yeah. to, for them to produce a fragrance like this is quite striking. This I was think. brave of them, I think. Oud Palau, yeah. uh, from the house of Diptyque. This is, this is a rose oud. Yeah, um, this, is, this could be a reference westernised version of a rose oud. Um, Discounting Armani and things. If, if you're watching this video and you, you, you were hoping to see Dior's Oud Ispahan, um, it's not there. It's not there because this is much better. <laughs> it's, it's a beautifully blended thing and, oh. and this it, is, it sort of exudes elegance whilst at the same time having this. This is another, another, um, funk. another, when I first smelt this you know, several years ago, I thought, oh, this, I thought the, the, the opening was too overwhelming. No, I mean now, Same here. I find it utterly beautiful. But also, this is a fragrance which I have been complimented on a lot. Yeah, same here. Yeah. So, when you first spray in the shop, you could you could easily be forgiven for thinking, "Wow, this is too strong for me. I couldn't wear something like this." But really, if you go into a department store and test this out, really do persevere with it because it is a beautiful, yeah. beautifully blended fragrance. And like we said a number of times, stick it on skin, honestly, because this yeah, thing. Yeah, you need to live with it and you see need how it a works. Journey. This thing takes hours to unfold and do its thing. But and if you yeah. smell it next door to something like Philosokos, you could not believe it comes yeah, from the same house. You, you would never guess. Yeah. Would you? You'd never guess. Which is why I love them. I think they're yeah. so gutsy. I'm, I'm so smart. pleased. I love wearing it. It's a beautiful fragrance. It's oh. one when I've, I'm quite low on my bottle and I will buy it again. You can have this. I one. really love it. Oh, thanks, man. It's really good. My gift. Um, Oud Palau. One of them. And I mean, another, another thing that's worth saying as well is that they keep coming up with interesting things. They never get stuck in a rut. Hmm? The, the latest yep. thing was like Eau de Moff. And then there's something else even since then, which apparently yeah. smells like something else that the zoologist might be doing, mm. which we all mentioned. But they're, con you know, they're constantly oh, that pushing the back really good, though. Beautiful. Good. Absolutely beautiful. Right. So we've kind of skirted um, around um, a few different countries, gone from west to east. Um, are the next four are from perfumers uh, who distill their own oud yeah. oil. So we're starting to get really serious now. These are the specialists, aren't they? I mean, we guys? should say we don't, these are not atars. These are still perfumes. I mean, yeah. atars is, is a whole other world. Which we are going to get into, I think. We're going to investigate. Um, I'll let, this is your bottle, so I'll let you open this. Let's check it out. This, this, this bottle has been in several of our lists, but it's never been number four. It's normally number one. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's, I have, to, I have to say, this is a bottle that this is a fragrance Dan introduced me to a few years back um, and we were on a perfume smelling trip to Rome and Dan was wearing this and he was sort of 12 feet down the road in front of me and the street was just filled with this most opulent thing um, it's Ottoman Empire now this is Ottoman Empire part 2 by Arige Lador or Dore, I don't know how you pronounce it um, and this thing ostensibly is meant to be a kind of a rose oud, but there's so much mm. else going on here, isn't there? The reason we've only, the reason it's only number four is actually because I think the the next three are a little bit more oud dominant. Yeah, that's Whereas the thing. This feels like there is so I mean, much. I mean, there's so much going. It, it's it is, stunning, isn't it? It is the most opulent smelling fragrance I own. Yeah, makes you smell like here. a king. It's like travelling back in time two thousand years. Yeah. To a place where there was no issue of what can I wear on the central line. So we started by saying that oud is an expensive okay. ingredient, and that smells like an expensive yeah. ingredient. The way it's combined, and it's it's not. I don't actually get a kind of dirty, funky oud. I just get this rich, warm bed yeah. un underneath everything else. It's. I mean, if you if you could say that Shalimar was the reference Oriental of its time, I think something like that would be the reference Oriental fragrance of today. Yeah. I, um, people don't know it. It's a limited edition. We scrabbled like mad, didn't we, when yeah. when this came out? I, I was doing something else and I couldn't get onto the computer. And Dan was there mm. trying Refreshing. to secure it for us. Yeah, I mean, and I'm so glad we did because that I mean that thing has pride of place in my collection now. So that's Ever. Otto Nepa from Proper Oud. A Riche Lidori. So next, 
we have we have another fragrance. Uh, we've just had a Rigel Dore made by Russian Adam. Yeah. Russian Adam, before he made perfumes, um, distilled oud oil as a part of Feel Oud. Uh, staying with the, um, mm. the house of Feel Oud, we have another perfumer, Dmitry Bortnikov. Um, and this fragrance. Uh, Look at that beautiful packaging. Oud Monarch. Now, Oud, one of the things about Oud is it. I find it so, as you delve into it, it becomes so complex and so multifaceted. And a lot of these um, people who really understand the material bring out different facets in mm. it. So the, the next two fragrances are focusing on the dark facets of it. The boozy, the chocolatey, mm. the leathery. This one, Oud Monarch. Let's just get, let's give it a spray. I'm so excited to try this again. Oh, that, it's such such a happy making smell, and and if you've if you've never encountered um, Bortnikov uh, fragrances before, glorious. That, uh, that, I mean, the thing about them that, that it's obvious that the quality of the ingredients is so good, but the blend is so smooth and so luxurious. Let me just let take a look at the notes list. Um, it's just basically lots of oud. <laughs> I mean, there's chocolate and labdanum in there as well, I mean, which gives this it's which gives this this kind of like boozy, caramelly hint of kind of chocolatey. But and also, I don't know if you can see the card. Like on the other side of the card, it's really stained. I mean, look at that. You may not get that. Color. So this is this is X-ray. So it's not quite a kind of an atar, but it, it's it's heading it's heading that way. I mean, it's just so rich. The depth. <laughs> it feels like you know I've said this before, but like, like a. A wave, a big wave, mm. is like water that crashes over the top of the sea, mm. but underneath the sea is actually relatively stable. Yeah. A tsunami, by comparison, is the wave and the entire bed of water yeah. underneath. And this feels like that. Absolutely. Whatever is in the top is going all the way down, and it's just a wall of it's not actually wonderful stuff. In a weird way, this isn't actually a huge... I mean, look at the colour of that. <laughs> look, in a way, this Beautiful. isn't a kind of a huge, huge fragrance. It's more of a big hug. A kind of caramelly, mm. leathery, chocolatey hug, and you really feel that uh, the Richard Bortnikoff has just tried to find the, these kind of rich, warm facets of the oud, yeah, and and play with them and kind of riff on them. But the fact that he, oh. the fact that he's done such a great job with the quality of the ingredients means that you're aware the whole time of the of the sort of depth of the smell, mm. and it doesn't shout, but. It, does force you to no. lean in a bit closer, oh, absolutely, because you know there's so much to find. Mm. Um, just in the interest in, of transparency, he uh, Bortnikov sent us this bottle, um, but I've got personally I've got no qualms including it in this list because it's so no, good. It's a masterpiece, and, I, and we would be dishonest if we didn't include it in this list yeah. because it's a great, great fragrance. Number two. <laughs> now this is similar. This this is similar, but in another. Another facet. Isn't yeah. It? So we've gone back to the house of Rio Dore. This is Russian food. This is special. This is yeah. This is I've had this for a while, and this is I, I almost well, blind well. bought it when I read the Kafka S re review, and I think she called it Willy Wonka's Oud Factory. Yeah. <laughs> um, so this is another like Oud Monarch. This is exploiting the kind of chocolatey. Caramelly um, facets of oud, oh, which are absolutely front and centre in this. <laughs> but it, that's really. Good. <laughs> but it's it's just. It, I mean, the opening's a bit more funky. It feels a bit more like the oud is a bit more mm. in your face, girl, than, than oud monarch. And this thing, I've, and I've said this before, this thing has that lovely ripe cheese, yeah, yeah, thing, which yeah. I love. I think it's absolutely the kind of fermented, sli slightly fermented quality. Yeah. And it's taken on a gorgeous powdery quality as well mm -hmm. now that I wasn't getting once upon a time. It's just... So you just got richer in, in the yeah, bottle, I mean, it? it's such a rich, such an indulgent fragrance. Oh, and it's so comforting and cosy. Mm. Oh, I, I really love it. Three-dimensional. Just, just, just to be completely honest, we really love this. This is one of the fragrances which, when I wear, my wife says, oh, you're wearing that poo one again. Oh really? <laughs> God. So just if you've never tried an oud fragrance, this is maybe not a great point uh, to go into. But if I did poos like that, I'd be. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't leave the toilet. But um, if you are interested in oud, I mean, unfortunately, this is now discontinued and difficult to get your yeah. hands on. But if you can at all, 
it's it's really special. It's really magical, and yeah. it just kind of shows the potential of, of this ingredient. Um, um, like a sort of cherry drop or something in the beginning. Yeah, I know as well. what you mean. Like, oh, there's a hint of kind of like cherry colory kind of vibe. Oh, for something that has that much that has that much depth and richness, to still have this slightly mm. playful thing in the top. Like they they all they all these guys here they all have a wonderful balance of seriousness mm. and playfulness. Yeah. But they're the most serious ouds of all of this collection, aren't they? So what's number one? Number one, well, this is a very special thing. Yeah. I'm going to hand over to you. I mean, this So this is one of the very we, finest so, things so, ever so we've gone... I'm wearing it today. You are wearing it there. And it's incredible. <sighs> See, My what's interesting, I'll, I'll talk thing. about that in a second. But first, I want to introduce Oud Maximus uh, from the house of Dmitry Portnikov. Uh, what is interesting, smelling Joe's hand there, so if, when I'm, if I spray this initially, this is... This is a fragrance with three types of oud oil and three types yeah. of rose in it as well. So it is, I guess, I suppose, a rose oud fragrance. Oh, it's but so the, much more than... I mean, it's quite a funky, it's really quite a big funky um, uh, oh. oud opening. But the other thing is, it has orange in it. When you first spray it, you get this orangey citrus smell, which for a rose oud fragrance oh. seems so unusual. I wish you could smell this, because yeah. this is absolutely <laughs> out of this world. Um, and even though the opening is big, the result, and what, you know, what I smelt on Joe's hand, which is after a few hours, is so smooth and so yeah. creamy, and not, doesn't feel shouty at all. I mean, we, like, to, to smell that and then smell the, the hand. Mm. See, that feels so that mellow, and actually, once it gets to the hand, I'm mm, far more aware of this, kind of, uh, all these florals. Which yeah. again, they just—they don't feel indolic. They feel really, really creamy. The whole thing has been put into a beautiful sort of cream soup, and and just allowed to blend in its own space. <sighs> and I really feel he's—I feel as if uh, Dmitry Bortnikov has sat down with these three types of food, put them together, and see what kind of aspects do I get of that. I get kind of some chocolatiness, some floral, some kind of citrus. Right, I want to slightly exaggerate those by adding more citrus, by adding more floral just to complement them. Everything is in perfect balance, that's the yeah, thing. Feels... For where there's a funky, dirty aspect, mm. there's a clean, fresh, vibrant aspect on yeah. the other side. And I think that's what makes it so perfect for me. And we, was, we were discussing uh, earlier, so uh, oh. the difference between Aris Lodore and Bortnikov, they both use mind-bogglingly um, fantastic ingredients. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. I, I sometimes feel with Arisha Dore you're slightly more aware of the ingredients going wow, 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 wow. Whereas I feel with Bortnikov it's, it's more about a kind of a smooth kind of blend. Yeah, I, I, I sense the Bortnikov is through the prism of a sort of slightly more classically trained maybe, French maybe, elegance, but uh, yeah. he, he's not that, I know. but Yeah, possibly. But, that, but, then, but then I also love Arisha Dore because you smell it and you think, wow, the ingredients are incredible. Yeah. But um, here we go. There are ten I mean, just oud that. fragrances for you. Our top ten. And really, I mean, get out there and find other things that we, you know, we need recommendations, don't we? We constantly like to. Yeah, but there are some things we've left out we intentionally. Find. You'll see. Yeah. that there are no Tom Ford. No, no, no. <laughs> um, Despite having a whole oud series, which we, I mean, we've liked. Yeah. Various things. I mean, I like we? tobacco oud for the tobacco and boozy, but I don't. I mean. I think most of Tom Ford have never seen any oud no. at all. I, there are other things like some of the Zedge of um, I I own uh, yeah. more than well, I, I bought more than words, but I've, I I think I will sell it because I don't wear it because I find it now very synthetic, yeah. and there are a lot of very very synthetic powerhouse yeah. oud rose fragrances like from the house of uh, Montal. Yeah. There are lots of black them. oud and things like that. I mean, yeah. there, there are more elegantly done. Yeah, which just feel roses. screechy and, and horrible and. Oud Queen Araby, I think, is good. Yeah. But again, it's just an enormous powerhouse that blinds you. And I think if you're blinded by a fragrance, mm. you're not really capable of deciphering it. Something like Oud Maximus, it's such a strong oh. flavor, fragrance in a way, where it, but nothing is punching it. No, it, and it's all in perfect balance. Everything is in proportion. You're getting so. Yeah. I mean, this is a spectrum of oud, isn't it? And I do, and I think I think it does show that worth trying um, all of these. oud, as we said at the beginning, oud is an expensive ingredient. Yeah. And if you want to really experience an oud fragrance, you do need to spend money. You we do, should also say yeah. we haven't. It's a big category. We haven't included any atars. We, there are also some omissions. We don't have 
um, anything by Ensai Oud. Yeah. Uh, I, I, yes. I, I, I briefly smelt one of his um, Ensai Oud one, which is absolutely incredible, but I, I don't own it, and it's not a house I've really explored, so yeah. I didn't think we could include it. In, but there are certainly some great Ouds there, and there are certainly there's a whole world of Oud out there. These are just things in our collections, aren't they? That they are all we think are a good top ten. Oud fragrances. Yeah. So if you have any suggestions which we really need to try, let us know. Yeah. But until now. No, not until now. Then. Until next time. Next time. Till next time. Bye. I'm sniffing.